Good morning. Good morning. Call, yeah, good good morning. morning. I call to order Public Meeting Number Two Ninety Two of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission at ten a.m. Uh, Saturday, March 14, 2020. This meeting is an emergency public meeting called pursuant to open meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 20B. Given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global coronavirus pandemic, Governor Charles Baker issued on March 12th an order pursuant to his declaration of state of emergency that provides limited relief from certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the health and safety of individuals interested in attending public meetings. In keeping with the guidance provided, the commission will conduct this public meeting utilizing remote collaboration technology. We thank all invited meeting attendees for their cooperation as they participate via phone, and we welcome all members of the public for joining us. This process alone symbolizes the complexity of times we are living in. The Gaming Commission has unique and broad regulatory powers and a multitude of responsibilities all established by statute. We have stated before and continue to maintain that ensuring the safety and well-being of our employees and the employees and patrons of our licensed entities is of paramount importance. Yesterday, a national emergency was declared in light of the coronavirus spread. I am proud of the work the Commission has conducted to assess and prepare for the reach of this virus over the last weeks. We, of course, are not alone. We are walking in step with fellow citizens, federal and state governmental agencies, lawmakers, businesses, and other stakeholders across the nation that are all working on behalf of their colleagues, neighbors, customers, patrons, and communities' health and safety. I am thankful for the consistent and transparent collaboration of the MGC licensed facilities, Plainridge Park Casino, GM Springfield, and Encore Boston Harbor. And I wish to thank all the state agencies, particularly the Commonwealth Secretary of Health and Human Services, and the Department of Public Health for its guidance and accessibility as we work to be well informed in a very dynamic environment. At this juncture, I determined that an emergency commission meeting was required for my fellow commissioners to be updated on the operational status of the licensed gaming facilities here in Massachusetts, so that we could take any required action to ensure we have met our responsibilities. At this juncture, I turn to our, our first um, item on the agenda and welcome interim executive director, Karen Wells. And if, uh, we, if in fact you find that you cannot speak, and um, when we ask participants to speak, uh, I will work to unmute you. You'll just have to give me a little bit of time because we have a number of participants today. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I just want to thank everyone for taking the time. Hold on a second. I want to thank everyone for taking the time this morning and also, you know, I realize this is an extremely fluid situation and we're all trying to do our very best under somewhat trying circumstances. I uh, appreciate everyone uh, just working with us as far as trying to do the right thing for the public, the patrons of the casinos, and, uh, and employees. So my understanding is that uh, we've had communication through staff with the attorney, with the, uh, the licensees, and that the licensees um, recognize that we're dealing with a public health emergency, that it's an extremely fluid situation, that things are changing rapidly on a daily basis, and that, uh, that the licensees, they'll agree to an orderly closure uh, from the commission. Um, I would like at this time, if we could, on the, um, you know, uh, through the technology, and I'm going to defer to the experts on the technology, so to give me a, a few minutes if necessary. But I'd just like to hear uh, first from Encore Boston Harbor, then uh, MGM, and then PPC, just to comment on that, anything they need to say. Because this is an emergency situation, 
My expectation is a lot of the details we're going to have to work through. So we recognize we will expect to have further communication going forward. So at this time, this is just a preliminary matter and we can just uh, speak with the gaming agents and the rest of the MGC staff about logistics. So this is just a preliminary conversation to step in the right direction. Yeah, we would expect that we'd have a meet, another meeting likely shortly to, for follow-up on logistics. So at this point, um, I just want to turn it over to Uncle Austin Barber. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chair and Commissioners. This is Brian Gulbrance. I'm the President here at Encore Boston Harbor. Um, we believe with the rise in cases in the Commonwealth and the recently announced school closures, um, we believe it's prudent at this time to pause our operations and put the safety and health of our guests and employees first. Uh, we would recommend a two-week closure and would suggest we evaluate the situation during that period. Uh, we are fully prepared to pay our full-time employees throughout this period and would hope that uh, the chair and commissioners take this consideration all this under consideration and our recommendations uh, ngm uh, we're fully supportive of whatever your decision may be okay. and then ppc and if we could just identify um, ourselves this is of course chair judge sign thank you Do we have someone from PPC on the call? And we, I, I wonder if you're muted. muted. Um, my apologies. Um, if I could just have a clean, um, unfortunately, the names are muted. Um, from PPC? Lance George. Um, is, it Steve, is it Lance George? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hello, can, uh, can you guys hear us? Hold on a second. Yeah. Hi, Coach, um, I think we have you now. Thank you. Okay, this is Lance George, General Manager from Plain Ridge Park. We would agree to, to whatever steps are necessary in whatever direction the MGC points in. Um, my fellow commissioners, before we go on, um, um, I will like for this effort to be somewhat coordinated. I will call upon you and um, then circle back to each of you if you don't have a comment now, but here the other fellow commissioners, we will give you the opportunity to reply. If um oh oh, oh okay, so um, we need I'm sorry, um uh, if my fellow commissioners could just pause. We need to just allow for one um, more of our representatives from MGM Springfield to present. Um, Seth, my apologies. No, no worries, uh, Chairwoman. Thank you for the opportunity. We we also, like Penn, are happy to comply with the commission to work collaboratively toward an orderly closure in the best interests of public health. Uh, and uh, the health and safety of our employees and patrons. So uh, we remain uh, ready, willing, and able to cooperate um, with the commission and appreciate um, appreciate the collaborative nature that this has been approached with so far. Thank you very much. Before we move on to the commissioners, um, would any of our other representatives from the three licensees wish to speak? Again, everyone's patience, I appreciate very much in light of our, our, our good technology, but complex um, complexity at the time. Okay, um, so moving to my fellow commissioners again, I'm going to make sure you're all unmuted. Um, if I can find anyone's name. Commissioner O'Brien, can you oh, hear hold me? On. She just... Yes, I can. Okay, great. Thank you. Would you like to, um, do you have any questions for our licensees or for um, interim executive director? Wow. Uh, 
I just want to start off with um, reiterating what Interim Executive Director Wells said in terms of the cooperative effort. And I'm hopeful um, and confident that we'll be able to come to uh, a resolution that, that deals with what we're facing. Um, I would definitely affirm that given uh, the federal, the FDC, CDC, and the governor and the guidance issued by the Department of Public Health at this time, that I think the only prudent thing to do is um, to suspend the operations for at least two weeks. I would want us to obviously be continuing to check on the status. As, as Interim Director Wells said, it's very fluid. Um, the comment I would make is we also have another um, concern, I think, as a commission to protect, um, as do the, the licensees, the employees of the licensees, as well as our employees. And I do also have concerns about the ability of the commission um, to ideally enforce and comply with our statutory obligations in terms of the gaming agents on the floor. Uh, and I think this definitely would deal with that concern as well that I have. Um, the question that I would have would be um, whether any of the licensees can also speak to um, Encore's intention to pay employees and or the status or any possible fund for part-time employees. Uh, I think that last sentence I couldn't hear perhaps that others on the phone can't hear. Could uh, you just repeat that? Um, sure. Whether there is a comment from um, either MGM and or PPC in regard to their employees and whether there's any further clarification as terms of uh, any part-time employees. Okay. Um, uh, Commissioner um, Stevens, please. Thank you. Good afternoon or good morning um, and appreciate everybody's time this morning. Obviously, uh, uh, I respect the fact and appreciate the fact that our licensees have been working very closely with us over the last few days, actually a few weeks as this uh, issue has emerged um, and appreciate their patience, but as well as the, uh, the opportunity for their team to uh, interact with our regulatory team and our interim executive director at this time. Um, uh, similar to ECHO, uh, Commissioner O'Brien's comments, um, obviously, you know, we're, we're dealing with the public health nature of this issue. Um, I think secondarily, uh, having a chance to work with each, each one of you to understand uh, preparations you might be making to inform your staff uh, would be helpful information. It may not be available at this time, but we would certainly welcome the opportunity to hear from you. Um, obviously, our teams on the ground will be working closely with your team uh, at each of the facilities. Um, and uh, obviously, the opportunity to uh, take into consideration some of the questions that some of our local officials from hosts and surrounding communities might have, we will certainly uh, work with you to, uh, to reach out and answer those questions as best we can. Commissioner um, O'Brien and Commissioner Stevens, thank you very much. Commissioner Zuniga, um, we will be, uh, asking for your comments in, in one one moment we are just trying to identify you on the on the list did you um i didn't stop because he's probably muted is he any phone number look at look on your 617 let's go to this number so that's okay because there's so many numbers just could he enter through his okay he can't 617 I need extra eyes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, Kathy, this is Katrina. If the uh, commissioner would just hit star six on her phone, it would unmute her if she's just calling in. This would be commissioner's uh, 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 Zuniga. So, Hi. Uh, Hi, it's, it's Enrique. Sorry, Enrique, thank you so much. Star six is the, um, now we know. Thank you. Um, Good morning, Commissioner Zuniga. You've been able to hear everyone's comments um, in, the, of the, in the presentations. Would you like to either ask a question or comment? 
Uh, well, I just I just want to mention that I was I dropped off uh, when um, Commissioner O'Brien was uh, in the middle of her remarks, and I, uh, you know, because I picked up uh, Karen's call, and and uh, but I I did hear all of the initial I've been on since the beginning, uh, the initial uh, comments uh, from you, from Karen, from the three licensees, and. Um, generally agree that I think we need to be uh, better safe uh, than sorry that this uh, may be uh, um, uh, uh, really acting on, on, on an abundance of uh, caution. Um, and I think uh, um, just seeing all of the other entities around us, the school districts, as was mentioned before, um, that it's only prudent to, um, to have a temporary closure and continue uh, uh, to assess uh, really on a not not just a, a daily but an hourly basis what what is clearly a very fluid uh, situation. So how how we get there in terms of uh, um, you know whether it, this is just a, a consensus or uh, or a, or an agreement uh, or a directive I'm I'm best concerned about. I think um, what I think we need and, and those are some of the details that I believe. Um, uh, Karen, uh, fall under what Karen was um, was alluding to earlier that we can uh, resolve. Uh, but I think a um, a pause, as was uh, as was being uh, mentioned here, is, is is not only warranted but uh, but prudent. Thank you, Commissioner. Senegal. Um, Commissioner Ramos, you have your your number, please. Uh, yes, this is uh, this is Commissioner Cameron calling in on my work cell phone. Um, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, we have so many. Phones. Okay, great. Yeah, I, thank you. I understand, and uh, I was able to hear everyone's comments, and I certainly agree with my colleagues that it's it's uh, extremely important to uh, to take at least a two week uh, closure at this point. Um, and and then reassess. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is I think it is important that we follow suit with all our licensees, meaning meaning Rainham and Suffolk are simulcast locations as well, um, because I think there could be an issue where uh, possibly there aren't as many people at those locations, but if they were to remain open, there may be others that were unable to go to our main licensees, and that could be a crowded facility. So I think it's important that we think about all five of the, um, the licensees when we talk about uh, closure here. And I also, um, I also um, commend the collaboration of everyone uh, thinking about public safety at this point. Um, Commissioner Cameron, you've raised a very good point. And of course, uh, as you know, things have been uh, very fluid and every, every member of the, um, the staff really all the way through the organizations have been working on this. And of course, Dr. Lightbound has expressed her interest in the safety and welfare of um, all those who are at the racetracks. I think you raised an important point and we expect to convene uh, under an emergency, probably the emergency um, powers that we have under the open main law, another meeting over this weekend and we can prepare staff to uh, make uh, to present to us uh, an update on on those facilities and make recommendations. Unless you think that swift action today is necessary, but I I am inclined to want to be better informed before we address those facilities. What do you think? Um, I. I I think consistency is important, and um, what whatever we do should apply to all our licensees. But uh, I will, you know, I will listen to my other my fellow commissioners on that. Actually, I think um, uh, and, and I know that the interim secretary is going to add in. We do have our uh, interim general counsel Todd Grossman on the line uh, because we do not have representation of those facilities. Todd, uh, do we need to be able to? notify them in advance before we were to take any directive order. Oh, Todd probably uh, needs to be muted. Hello. Hi. Okay, good, good morning. I think I muted myself. Good. Thank you. 
Yeah, I would, I would, I, I think it, it's certainly prudent to ensure that we include um, all of the facilities in whatever directive there is. And of course, as everyone discussed, we will work on the details as to how that comes to be. The commission, obviously, as everyone knows, has very broad superintendent's authority over all licensees, and I think you could um, easily include uh, the two racing uh, facilities in whatever direction we want to go here this morning. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is this is Karen. I'm just uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little concerned because they're they're not on the call. They get no notice. Uh, my suggestion is maybe we do a very quick. Uh, other meeting once we have an opportunity to talk to them because I haven't even spoken to any of them. I, I would certainly agree on that point. Certainly, if we could get just clarity as to whether there's a broad agreement that they should be included, I think we can definitely work uh, towards that result. But I would absolutely agree that they need to be included in the discussion. So, yeah, my suggestion here is that go with the three casino licensees right now and then reconvene short the other two so they have an opportunity uh, to discuss the matter with staff in case there's something that that we're not aware of and put them on the in a subsequent call very very quickly so is that consistency across the the five prop, the five properties and five licensees Gail, yeah, does that make sense to you it does okay thank you yeah, this is. Uh, okay, I'm can, can you hear me? Yeah, this is Enrique. So um, maybe just to um, to 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 clarify, um, we're going to try to seek uh, uh, you know involvement and input, but I don't think that should uh, of the racing licenses, but I don't think that should impede anything out of this call, the, should it? No, I think that what um, we have marked up the agenda on is with respect to the three licensees um, that are notified and represented today on the call, and that would be PPC and um, the, uh, Encore Boston Harbor and MGM Springfield. We have not given notice as to the, the racing facilities, and Commissioner Cameron has wisely brought that issue to our attention, which we appreciate, but we need to give proper notice to them and properly mark up the agenda to address that. Um, although the, we are working under emergency circumstances, we plan to convene another meeting this weekend in any case, and then we could get good information through our staff to discuss this issue and, and give fair notice to the other entities. So we would proceed with respect to just the three licensees who are on the agenda today. Uh, unless I hear an objection either um, from my fellow commissioners or uh, uh, General Counsel uh, Grossman, if there's anything else you'd want to add. No, that sounds exactly right to me. I, I like that. And Commissioner O'Brien. Um, yes. Cox? Any uh, thoughts? Uh, no, I'm just if, if you know, I'll wait my turn for my for the responses to my other questions. But I think that what was raised by um, Commissioner Cameron is uh, appropriate. Yes, and and in our resolution for just to put it uh, to address it um, in another meeting um, with the understanding it is an issue. Does that work for you? Uh, as long as we do the meeting um, forthwith. Yes. Thank you. I think we're all in agreement. And again, thank you, Commissioner Cameron. Um, uh, Commissioner O'Brien, have you had a, another question or comment? Uh, no, not beyond what I said initially. Okay, does anyone have any of um, my fellow commissioners? I think you're all unmuted. Uh, and, uh, Commissioner Sanders, who's with, with me, do you have any further questions or comments for our licensees? So, the, um, I, it's it's, uh, uh, it's Enrique again. Um, is there is there a time frame as to when this would become effective? Are we talking as of now? Has it uh, has there been some kind of um, partial or total closure already? I, I'm just curious about uh, yeah, time frame. Uh, my my fault uh, for not bringing you up to date, Commissioner Zunica, but you did let us know that you dropped off. And, uh, Commissioner O'Brien was speaking. Commissioner O'Brien, can you just um, let uh, uh, Commissioner Zunica know what you thought about a time? 
as far as I'm concerned, I think this should be done and effectuated as soon as possible. So in terms of um, closing the floors to the public, I think it should be done as safely and as quickly as possible in a way that enables the businesses to then do then, what they And in terms of the suspension of the operations, would you recommend recommended a two week period um, with us uh, uh, checking in at the end of that two week for next steps? Is that how you frame it? I do. I, I am not going to be at all surprised if we are having this conversation again toward the end of that period, just with the clarity that we would need to check in quite frequently because if it, it is extended um, or reopened on a limited basis, obviously we're going to have to be having constant communications with each other and our licensees. Uh, great. I, I, had a, I had another question. Uh, this, would this apply to uh, only the gaming area? Uh, can we assume that the rest of the facilities are uh, subject to the mm -hmm. discretion or of the, of the licensees? Um, I actually will turn to our, our fellow licensees. I know that the governor issued an order that might have informed some of the uh, decision making on that. Um, in terms of my fellow, uh, the, the licensees, uh, perhaps I could ask either Brian or Kathy if you wish to comment on that. We understand that you want, if you if things are fluid and you haven't made decisions, but that is this question. Uh, you know, it, 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 we are in our. Pardon me. Yes, uh, this is Brian Goldbrandt. I'm sorry, Jackie wanted to re remind me that I should tell everybody who this is. Um, our, our fully integrated resort is just that. So I think to, to isolate the gaming floor would be difficult for us. I can't speak for the other constituents on the phone. Um, with respect to the timing of a closure, I agree it should be as quickly as possible, but in order to fully prepare for an orderly and well-orchestrated closing, um, we would rec re request and, and propose a closing as of either late Sunday night or maybe Monday, early Monday morning so that we can communicate effectively with all of our guests, our employees, our partners, and our suppliers. We'll leave that to you and comply with whatever you decide, but we'd request um, at least uh, 24 to 48 hours to get everything organized. And, uh, Brian, uh, this is Karen, and my understanding is that uh, uh, you know, we've talked to our gaming agents. They also need a little time to repair. There was a whole process of procedure for shutting down a casino, um, particularly with the amount of money on the floor and certain responsibilities that they have. It seems reasonable. Um, this is Commissioner O'Brien again. I guess my question is, is in terms of phasing this, um, I would assume there is a way to close it to guests while still safely wrapping up with employees and gaming agents. Absolutely. So I'm wondering if, if maybe we can get some insight in terms of timing from um, the licensees and IEB on, on that. Uh, we're happy to comply with whatever you recommend. We could certainly uh, close down the uh, gaming floor by this evening if that was something that you were interested in. And then by uh, Sunday, we have hotel guests that are overnight stays. We'd want to make sure that we make accommodations for them and arrangements to get them to some other facility. And we have inbound guests that we're going to have to reassign to other hotels, whatever might be open. But I, I want to have an opportunity to take care of our guests as well and give the employees the heads up of what's happening. Um, so we've certainly prepared to do whatever is recommended, but um, if we would like to have the gaming floor closed uh, by this evening, and then uh, further to that, have all non-gaming and full operations closed by Sunday night, uh, it would be appreciated to have that additional time. All right, this is Commissioner O'Brien. I think that would be my preference. I don't know about the other commissioners. No, I agree with that. This is Commissioner Cameron. I agree that um, uh, that's prudent to, to by tonight and then tomorrow, certainly we understand guests have to be accommodated elsewhere. Uh, and this is Karen. I just had a, a brief conversation with our uh, chief of our gaming agents division and they've indicated they're ready to go. So we can be accommodated. Karen, I think you broke off a little bit at the end. What, was that a question for someone? 
No, no, I'm just saying the gaming agents already have a plan in place, uh, so they are ready. They can with whatever time frame works for the casinos. Okay, um, any further questions from my fellow commissioners uh, for our three licensees or for our um, interim executive director, Karen Wells? Well, I, I would like to hear from MGM if they have a similar um, uh, approach as, as, um, as, um, as Wind Resorts at Accor relative to hotel and other areas that are non-gaming. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Commissioner Simpson. Again, I understand a few of the issues, but uh, MGM, if you wish to comment. This is Seth. Uh, I'm gonna defer to um, Chris Kelly. Chris, if, if you can chime in, but I... Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, President Kelly for joining us. I, I um, appreciate if you are able to answer. Yeah. We understand. If, if, so I believe we're aligned with Wynn. Uh, certainly, I, I want to give Chris an opportunity to add any further color if he's able to, um, if you're able to connect him. Thank you. And then um, Plain Ridge. Um, um, that's George. Sure. Um, yeah, not a problem to close down. I think the only thing that we would ask for is a few hours. We're at the property right now, a few hours to communicate with our employees so that they can hear it from us as opposed to, um, you know, from other employees or from patrons. Thank you. Commissioner you have um, further questions? Well, only that uh, it sounds like we're going to be hearing from MGM um, on the on the other areas uh, uh, in a little bit, or or was that uh, a, um, you know uh, are, are they in agreement with closing the whole resort? They said that they were aligned with the lift coach. What what was that? I think they well they can speak to them again, but I heard aligned with them. Okay. Yes, that's that's correct, um, and I think we're having some difficulties. Um, Chris was trying to chime in, but um, was unable to be uh, heard. I guess um, we are. Yeah, we are, are you able to hear me now? You heard from the wind, folks. Am I on now, by any chance? Yes, you are. Chris. You, you are. Yeah. Yeah, we could hear you. Well, good morning. Good, good morning, morning, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> Uh, well, thank you so much, and I apologize for having some technical difficulties on on my side. Um, yes, we are aligned with WIN in terms of uh, requested timing for the gaming floor by the end of the night tonight, um, as well as non-gaming by tomorrow. Um, we think those are both reasonable and achievable. Um, we're also aligned with WIN with respect to the payment of our team members over that two-week period. That's very good. Very good to hear. Thank you for that clarity. I guess the, the one thing that probably needs a finer point is um, whether there can be unanimity um, on a time. As opposed to close a business tonight, I know a lot of you are 24 on the gaming floor, so we, I think we need to sort of agree on what is a reasonable uh, and safe time for the gaming floor. Would Commissioner, that be, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Commissioner, this is Brian Gulbrandt from Encore Bus and Harbor. Um, if I could recommend we just go to the end of the gaming day, I believe it's 5 or 6 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. We, we, would be, we would be finished. It would be 5 a.m. 5 a.m. 5.59 a.m. Uh, and that would just finish out the day cleanly. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I think my preference would be before midnight tonight. I don't know how my other commissioners feel. We'll, we'll, we'll comply either way. I don't know if my other commission, if the other commissioners want to chime in. Right. I, I think that makes sense too, be, uh, because, you know, we had said end of the day and you had said end of the day today. So it was my, when I hear end of the day, I'm thinking midnight 
because I think it may confuse people to, to be able to come in the morning tomorrow, but then have to leave by 6 a.m. Um, I, I think, and then the same thing, the end of uh, the evening tomorrow night for hotel guests. So it's it's tonight and then tomorrow night. So we'll say midnight for both evenings, is that correct? I, I mean, I think that makes sense. Great. Too. Thank you. You know what, we, um, I just want to make sure Commissioner Stebbins, and you guys get a chance to on that, Commissioner Stebbins. Yeah, I would agree. You know, end of the gaming day is uh, midnight tonight um, for any hotel guests, et cetera. Uh, midnight on Sunday. I guess I had an additional question for um, MGN. You obviously have uh, business operators on your location who are exactly that, business partners. Can you share any conversations that you've had with your business partners, the folks who have other retail space and what, uh, how they would be aligned with your plan at this point? Hi, this is Chris again. Um, we have had some preliminary conversations with our operators um, and right now we're leaving the temporary closure of, of those facilities in the hands of those operators that are not directly attached to the gaming floor. Um, but that's a, a conversation that we can certainly revisit um, following this discussion. Okay, that'd be great. And obviously, any developments on that, if you could be back in touch with our executive director. Absolutely. Commissioner Sindigan, any further questions on that? Well, I... Um... I'm, I'm frankly less concerned about exactly what time. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm imagining that there's a lot of logistics that, um, you know, uh, that uh, the licensees have to take into account uh, as they as they go along. But uh, I, I think in general it's good to have a target uh, a target time, and it all, you know, the difference between a few hours uh, in my mind, you know, may may not make a, a big difference. But whatever the consensus uh, is, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I was. Uh, I, I had a question relative to um, uh, whether. Commissioner Zuniga, if you could hold that question, because I do want to be in Captain Connors to address the logistics from his perspective as the our captain of and and of the gaming enforcement unit um, in terms of the process for closure at midnight versus the five uh, fifty uh, uh, time fifty nine time. Uh, he happens to be here and we want his expertise here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, just as uh, the chair had mentioned, uh, the concerns being the, the process of the evac evacuation or the, or the shutting down of the business at midnight versus that 0559 time frame. Uh, from, from our standpoint, the public safety standpoint, uh, that that is a concern as far as midnight. Um, and also the messaging ahead of the closure. Um, and if we do get significant numbers uh, in advance of that closing, then, um, that comes into play from our perspective as far as moving people out at midnight to that early morning hour. This is Commissioner O'Brien. What about a two, if, if you're saying that that might be problematic, um, what about a 2 a.m. closure and suspending basically starting with um, 2 a.m. when everything else would be shut down anyway, the other businesses and nightclubs, et cetera. Yeah, I think um, I mean, a lot of those businesses are shut down at, by 2 a.m. Uh, or even by midnight. Uh, the, uh, some of the, the other businesses, uh, that doesn't make much of a, a difference in, in my opinion uh, regarding midnight or two. Uh, we obviously get a little bit later in the night. Uh, again, it's all going to be dependent upon what type of crowd does show up uh, earlier in the evening and how late they, they plan on staying. So I guess for point of clarity, are you saying that it is a safety concern to close at midnight or just more challenging? More challenging. Okay, so still doable? Uh, doable, obviously weighing the, you know, the, the overall intent is, is, is to get the facility closed. It's, it's, quickly as possible if that's the intent. Uh, you know, we'll work with it, but I just want to raise those concerns as 
you know, midnight a midnight crowd versus a uh, six a.m. Yep. Uh, two day. And, and that was part of my point about like allowing for this to be a judgment call with our people there uh, to make sure that there's an orderly um, winding down and maybe not necessarily not an unnecessarily rushed. I'm not suggesting that will happen, but trying to meet what might be a challenging uh, a, a deadline, uh, we wouldn't want uh, uh, you know some kind of other consequence on a person. I would I would um, be um, inclined to agree with Captain Connor's recommendation, um, and also I, I am in full appreciation of the collaborative spirit uh, of our licensees. You know, in this case, as I as I said in my opening statement, everyone's working to do their very best in the most difficult time. And our goal is to make it orderly. Um, if I'm hearing public safety challenge um, because the crowd might be larger at midnight, um, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with with Captain Captain Connor. And uh, I think um, Executive Director uh, Wells also wants to give an, an update. Um, and then we will turn back to Commissioner Cameron. I just to let folks know, I just had a quick uh, offline phone conversation with Bruce Band. So uh, he's done some downs um, in his experience. He uh, is it is a little bit easier with the with the smaller crowd. I just want to put that out as just a point of uh, information for the commissioners. Yeah. yeah, and this is Commissioner Cameron. I certainly defer to. Um, to uh, the expertise of those who have closed before and those who have tried to um, uh, tried to empty a building uh, and what those challenges are. So public safety always uh, always trumps in my mind. <clears throat> so you would be comfortable if it shifted from midnight to the closer to the early morning hours. I think the messaging to the point of messaging is really important, and I assume that. Um, Karen, you defer to the licensees on, on how they message, but we can also assist through um, our communications director, Elaine, just for one, knows online um, to help in, the, in that messaging, but it would be, you know, of course, completely in depth with each licensee. Uh, and I'm sure that that would probably help on, on the safety factor, Dr. Connors. Yes, correct. Okay. So uh, as we as we think about this, um, these are all details for our ultimate vote, um, Commissioner. So we don't have to all agree on every detail right now, but we'll want to think about that the guidance when we actually vote on this matter. Uh, I'm going to now return to the lineup, Commissioner O'Brien. Do you have any other questions or comments about any 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 issue? Um, just if I could hear from PPC on the one outstanding matter in terms of their employees at the, during that time. Uh, this is Lance George. Uh, can, I, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. 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 Thank you, George. Yeah, I believe, I believe what I heard is consistent with how we will approach and that is we intend to pay our employees for two weeks. After that time, we will, uh, we will reevaluate. So I believe we're consistent. Okay, thank you. Uh, and in terms of um, just the closing, I think um, I, I would I would likewise defer to Captain Connors and, and Bruce Band in terms of how to do it expeditiously, but in the safest way possible. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sevens, do you have any additional questions or comments? Uh, I do not. I all, only to say I definitely agree with uh, Captain Connors' recommendation. Thank you. Commissioner Zuniga. Yeah, I, thank you. I had a question um, for uh, for whomever of the licensees. So uh, when, when everything is uh, closed and, uh, and it's achieved, is there anything that remains uh, a skeleton crew for safe security, um, cameras uh, still available to be monitored? Can, can you just tell us what actual closure means? Uh, Commissioner, this is Brian Goldbrandt. We intend to have 
a management team that will stay behind, a security engineering and surveillance team that will stay behind. Uh, we would hope uh, with the GEU as well, uh, we will lock everything down and for safety and security of all concerns, we want to make sure that we have a uh, crew in here to obviously disinfect and clean everything. We'll have our uh, call center available for customers and employees. We'll probably also have a small crew of our HR leaders. So we will maintain a small staff to protect the asset and to inform everyone of what's happening. Um, and we certainly want to have the opportunity to get um, everything uh, fully disinfected, cleaned, and ready for whatever we might be able to open prior to that. Thank you, Brian. And this you is uh, Captain Connors, just to confirm that you know, GU will remain on the state obviously 24-7 and will work closely with security and surveillance department moving forward. We always had, well, we had some of that initial conversation, but we'll tighten up up to now. We'll be on the 24-7. This is Lance George at Plain Ridge. I just wanted to reiterate or uh, repeat exactly what Encore said, and that is that we will have a small staff that remains behind. One, to secure the facility, and two, we will take the opportunity to clean and disinfect the facility as well. Excellent. Thank you. And MGM, would you like to comment? We have uh, alignment on this issue with our uh, fellow operators, um, similar approach to the skeleton team that will remain uh, in the complete um, cleaning and disinfecting of the facility. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you all. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, no additional questions. Okay. Um, uh, Executive Director Wells, do you have any additional comments that you'd like to make? And if you would like to repeat the recommendation clarity, if that's helpful at the time. Um, or if uh, I know we have uh, um, uh, Mr. Grossman is on the line as well, if you want to help in any way frame um, any action. I know that we have preserved the opportunity to vote today. We've been um, briefed. I hear that none of my um, fellow commissioners have additional questions. I'm upset. I, I am very proud of all the work that every single MGC employee has done at a very difficult time. Um, it troubles me that I know there have been employees here who have been very nervous about their own health and about their family's health and they are still committed to the community's health and it's been a very taxing time so i want to express my gratitude for that um in terms of the uh, licenses you have worked in concert with our team here and we appreciate that because again we know that you have our community members your patrons your employees and our employees who are at your sites best interest um, <clears throat> in your heart and in your actions. So I just wanted to express my gratitude. It has been a trying time for all of our staff to work on these matters and um, while continuing to do their everyday obligations they um, are so committed to. So I, um, I just want to express that. So barring no further, um, uh, no further um, uh, questions from my fellow commissioners. I would ask that um, Mr. Grossman, if you could frame to us um, action that you would recommend for us to take in light of today's discussion, taking into consideration some of the recommendations that um, came through our individual commissioners and that will lower our, motion, our, our um, vote accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at the moment, um, and there was I don't, I, unfortunately, I don't have it right in front of me, um, uh, Madam Chair. I don't know if you have and you know, the language or. Commissioner Stebbins can um, frame it for us. And then again, we can tailor it carefully to the discussion today. Um, this is just an effort to give us some structure today under um, our virtual circumstances. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to effectuate a motion, I would suggest a move in light of the present public health emergency 
that the commission authorize executive staff to work in collaboration. There are three gaming licensees to prepare a written agreement for the commission to review as soon as possible, effectuating a safe and orderly suspension of operations of the respective gaming establishments for a period of two weeks. The commission will have the ability to revisit the matter periodically, but no later than two weeks from today. Um, just a technical correction, I guess. If we're going to go through Sunday, the date, it should probably say 15 days as opposed to two weeks, so we know a date certain. Okay, so we can include an effective date of today for 15 days. March 29th. Uh, certainly, just to avoid any vagaries in terms of timing, because it looks like you're really talking about a, um, a March 15th date for the actual physical closure to commence on the gaming floors. I think a 15 day from today effectuates the purpose and intent of the parties on the call, but makes it very certain in terms of the calendar. So March 29th, Commissioner O'Brien? Yes. Okay, um, that, that it will be May. Do we have any further discussion on the motion as presented by Commissioner Evans? I hear none. No further edits, no further discussion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I will do a roll call. Um, for our commissioners so that we know that we have a, uh, a, a recorded vote. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And the chair votes yes. Thank you, we have um, our, uh, our uh, vote has passed five zero. That could be reflected. Sharon, I know you're taking our minutes. We appreciate your assistance. And Todd, we know that you have been monitoring this. Um, we have completed the, the first item on the agenda. I have no further um, matter that's been identified for today. Please stay tuned. We anticipate convening another meeting to bring uh, these the details um, to the forefront. And uh, we appreciate. Uh, of the members of the MGC staff today on their Saturday morning to hear this news that's important to their daily lives. We appreciate all of the representatives who have joined us from our three licensees. As always, I appreciate my fellow commissioners joining us. And I thank you for um, tolerating um, uh, uh, our virtual. We appreciate the and the Attorney General's um, guidance on and um, belief that they've granted uh, to allow us to do this virtually in the interest of everyone's safety. So thank you. And do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved by Commissioner Seven. Second by Commissioner Cameron. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. Commissioner Zimmerman? Aye. And the chair votes yes. Five zero. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Have a good Saturday. Stay safe.